your shoulders I call you my shoulder tonight because I feel like I need a place to lean The funny thing about wanting a place to lean is What happens to those who lean on me for comfort and security? I really don't have a clue, I guess they hold on to some of my words and a few memories as I feel you often do when I can't be close to you. I wish I could do the same, but my memories often cause me to want to let go and just leave this world behind, because I'm pretty much alone in this twisted world of mine. You see, my friends haven't been real friendly these days, and family, well, let's just say they've gone their own way. And there's really nobody to blame or even any harsh words to say because my days are not like your days. My days are spent in patience and meditating, trying to keep hold of what's troubling my mind, and your days are spent searching for more time. So when I lean on you, it makes me feel kind of weak. But in reality, these are only words that a fool would speak. I'd like to release on you all my agonies, troubles, and fears, but some of these things, even you would be afraid to hear. See, I'm kind of stuck and I'm running out of places to turn, and that flame inside of me is struggling to continue to burn. And there's been so many wrongs done to me, yet I bury those woes deep inside of me. And little by little, I'll dig one out or occasionally too and flip it around trying to bring a resolution to the things that they put me through and more times than few I'll take the responsibility for what others have failed to do and yes that includes you you see satisfaction is never guaranteed but thanks for the talk and helping me to continue to believe perhaps tomorrow will be the day when somebody will care about me you see, I grew up a bad child and was mistaken to be one of those badass project kids. But little did they know how I really lived. I rose from the slums around the age of three when most kids in my hood, West B-more City, only had marble stairs and pictures of things in life that most of them wouldn't even live to see. Yet, Middle class wasn't all that it appeared to be. You see, my mom's was a nurse taking care of those disabled people that you seldom see. You know, the ones out there that are Rosewood or Springfield facility. And Pops, man, he, he worked at B&O Railroad down by the old McCormick factory. And they say that money makes life easy, but why was mine so hard? Behind closed doors was just me, my mom, and George. Back in the day when the neighbors minded theirs and you minded yours. That's why nobody knew that it was my toothbrush being used to clean basement floors. That I was whipped with extension cords and punished by two by fours. And yeah, Pops, he loved moms in a deranged sort of way cause she come running out of a room with her lights getting bleeding and her clothes torn away I was 10 years old so what could I say so I'd go to my room close the door and talk to God and pray that someday someday we'll find a way to escape this menace of mine but the day didn't come soon enough because we all ran out of time See, George passed away when he was only 31 years old. Trapping holes and sniffing blow was the only escape that my poor brother had come to know. And, and me, well, I'm doing 20 years for killing a dude. And banging that gun, that's where I put my attitude. See, if you looked at me wrong, I put two in your dome and think nothing of it. My mind was so twisted that blood washed away the pain. And mom's well, she met a good man and they're married today. But she's still a wreck in her own sort of way. You know, 
They should have left us in the ghetto if this was going to be the price we had to pay. You see, the cost of freedom is trapped in the back of my mind. And if you lived how I live, you would know why I'm crying. I'm trying to escape this minute's day after day. But all I keep coming up with is that they should have left us in the ghetto if this was going to be the price we had to pay.